Hello, you delectable cunts. Um, it's me, back again. Um, I have a very sore chest from the gym, so you might see me do this sometimes with a bit, or with a bag of ice. Don't be alarmed. I'm not injured, I'm just sore. I keep on looking at that screen whenever I should be looking at you. Welcome to Documented Bits. Today I'm going to be talking about uni and things like that um, because this is very last minute thrown together uh, Josh was supposed to be doing the episode this week but then some things came up and he couldn't so it's up to me bag of ice down can of Diet Coke up All right, let's get on with the show. One, that's it. Yeah. Okay. No. no. Apologies to your ears. Okay. If I did more like this and more central in the camera. <coughs> um. Suppose actually she's. Set a timer. Is what, well, actually, no. It's really to get a timer set on the camera. Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about uni. And sort of like the do's and don'ts of uni. Because, uh, as some of you may know, I'm in my final year of university. John Murs, Liverpool. I've done some podcast episodes from John Murs. With guests such as Karen Birchall and Matteo Genovese. Uh, if you don't know who they are, search back over prior episodes and give them all a wee listen because they're good boys. Um, we always have a time. But today, uh, um, hmm? today I'm going to be having a time with all you beautiful cunts by myself. What a time. Uh, so I may as well start this off with um, general things. <coughs> now, if you or if a lecturer was to ask me, or if my mum and dad were to ask me, um, how often should you go to lectures? I would say, hmm, all the fucking time. But, um... It's not you, or it's not them that's asking me. It's you, or me, more specifically. I can see myself peeking on the uh, audio thing, um, measure device thing, but I don't care. I'll bring it down in post, and I'll sign all lovely for yous. Um, yeah. So, if a lecturer mum and dad asked me, I would say, go all the time to lectures. But here's the scoop, ladies and gents. You don't have to go all the time, especially first year. First year, as long as your attendance is above 80%, golden. Absolutely golden. Because first year, uh, well, might be different for other courses, but first year for film studies... Uh, I find pretty damn pointless, not because the course isn't good, or what we lear- uh, what we were learning wasn't good. It's just I did it all before an A level, so first year was just sort of like a recap year for me. The only times where I felt like I was learning anything was uh, during the like camera equipment and like audio equipment workshops because it was new equipment that we hadn't used before. And then where I learned the most stuff is whenever we were making our own films and we were less left to our own devices out in the field. 
Um, so I learned a lot there about uh, the Canon C100, which I am filming with now. It's a very nice cinema camera. And the Zoom H6 as well, which I use quite a lot. Uh, whenever I'm in Belfast doing the podcast with Josh, I will use an H6 Zoom to plug my XLR lead into, which goes into this bad boy right here. El microphone. What about if you ever hear me? Take a little pause, because aren't the gains a wee bit fucky on this and these... Headphones can't really get everything. Probably because I'm wearing a hat. Uh, if I do go silent, it's probably because I'm taking a drink of this delectable, delicious Diet Cola. Please sponsor us Diet Coke. Um, I forgot what I was talking about before. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was talking about how I I didn't really learn anything in first year. Um, I only worked out halfway through the year that I didn't really need to go to lectures. I hear bangs. Uh, yeah, I only learned halfway through first year that I didn't really need to go to lectures. Uh, on things that I've already learnt. So, uh, again, you're not supposed to do this, but... A lot of the time I would just leave my card thing with people. Uh, I don't have my keys on me so I can't show you. But we have a student card that you just booped on an iPad thing. And that signs you in. So I just leave my card with them. Or you can type in username and that. And that signs you in as well. So I would just get people to sign me in. My attendance was bang, 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 bang. Right up the fucking top. And I ended up getting a 2-1 overall for first year, which, if you don't know, the university grading system, uh, the top mark is a first, or first class honours, and then below that is a 2-1, which is what I got. Below that is a 2-2. Uh, below that is a third, I think. Yeah, a third. And then below a third is a fail. Below 40% is a fail. So yeah, first year, didn't really need to go to lectures. I ended up passing the year flying colours. Second year, uh, second year, it was actually a lot more interesting. I learned a lot more things because we weren't going back through the stuff that I learned in A-level. Uh, the reason I did that in first year is because my course as well, it wasn't one of those ones like, say, Queen's University in Belfast where you had to get a uh, two B's and a C to get in. John Moore's was just three A levels, you're into the fucking film course. Um, which is why I, I got in. And, <coughs> yeah, so basically they need to take first year to explain to everyone what the fuck's going on because because not all of them did film studies or moving image arts for A level like myself. But then second year was more for us people that did film studies at A level because it was a lot more tailored to um a university level of academia. Look at me, I'm fucking third year now and I'm using big words like academia. When the fuck am I only two minutes in? I feel like I've been talking for longer than that. Um, yeah, so second year I had to go to a lot more lectures. I still, still didn't go to all my lectures. Missed out on a lot of 9am's uh, on Wednesdays. But I got people to fill me in. It was grand. But don't do what I did. Second year, go to all your lectures because I think I got a, <coughs> I think I got a two two overall last year. But somehow my uh, like overall grade at the minute is still two one, and then this year, third year, that's when you go to all your fucking all your fucking lectures, which I have done this year. I've been to every single one. I think I don't think I've missed any. 
Well, no, that's a lie. There was one I missed because I went home early for Halloween break. Because I wanted to spend time with my baby boys for Halloween. And um, so that's what I did. Uh, yeah, so that's attendance, by the way. As I said before, we're just very basic stuff. <gasps> I just realised I'm not two minutes in, I'm fucking eight minutes in. I don't know where that two is coming from. I know you just don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but it makes sense to me. So, get fucked, cunts. <coughs> So yeah, that's the tendons out of the way. Very basic stuff. We're going on here. And then obviously assignments and that as well. Don't do what I do and leave it to the last fucking minute. Um, my excuse for first year and second year for leaving it to the last minute was that for each module you would get taught one thing about that like module each week, each lecture. So my way of justifying leaving it to the last minute in my head was... Sure, we're only learning about that in fucking, like, week 10. That's a week before the assignment's due. How am I supposed to know that if they leave it to week 10? But here's the shit, boys and girls. If, you're li- if your university is like John Murs, you will have a site like Canvas. I think a lot of UK unis and colleges use Canvas. I uh, don't know what it's like in the United States, and where else have we got listeners? Belgium. we got one listener from Belgium. I uh, don't know what it's like there, but we got, we've got a site called Canvas. It used to be Blackboard, it's now Canvas, where you get all your like lectures, all your PowerPoints on that site for each module. And also on that site, for each module, is the readings you need for each week which you're supposed to read all at the start of the year, or at least do the readings before you come to class. Which is, if I had done that, I could have got started my assignments a lot earlier. I didn't, so I left at the last minute. And I could, basically, moral of the story is, I could be doing a lot better than I actually am. I'm trying to be aware of my um, voice volume here. Because these walls are paper thin. Uh, So yeah, don't leave your assignments to the last minute. If you do have a site like Canvas or Blackboard or something like that, I'm assuming that you do because we are in the 21st century. Technology is a thing. I didn't imagine it. I didn't imagine it. So, get on that shit, go do your readings, even if you can't write a complete essay at the minute, at least do the readings, start on an essay, weeks in advance, pick your topic, a topic that you're interested uh, interested in, look at your readings as early as possible, start to write something, and then whenever it comes to the time of the actual lecture, you'll have a knowledge on it, you'll have your shit written, even if you hear something in a lecture that uh, you like interested in and think would, and, like, say your lecturer says some shit about the topic that you're talking about, and it just fucking clicks. Well, shit, boy, that can go in your essay, your almost nearly completed essay, and make it better. Hmm? See, this is another thing. Do your assignments. Early. Don't be a silly boy like me and turn them in like 10 minutes before the deadline. Or, for the case of my last essay, one minute after the deadline. <clears throat> Forgot to set to start as well. This is more tailored towards uh, new students undergraduates go on to uni um but if you're in uni at the minute um you can take some of this some of this advice on board for your first year or second year um i'm not going to act like i'm an expert on university for all the final years or third years listening 
at the end of the day, I pretty not much know fuck all, but I know more than a second year or first year. So, suck my willy. <clears throat> Another piece of handy advice. Um, this is especially if you go into Liverpool. Uh, I don't know about other accommodations, but uh, if you're a smoker and you happen to go to a Unite students accommodation, oh shit, baby boy, you just hit the fucking jackpot. Because you can smoke in your room. Ooh. That's right. Fucking things on the roofs. They're not smoke detectors. They're goddamn heat detectors. Want to know how I know that? Because I smoked in my room. And it was all dandy. And someone else in another flat was fucking cooking. They're Chinese, by the way. Cooking. I'm not being racist either. They were genuinely cooking rice and things. So they're cooking their rice. Set that whole shit on fire. Flame went up very fucking hot. Uh, I was saying about going to the gym. My arm hurts. That's a sigh. So I can lift my arm. Can you notice the difference? Pew. Damn. Uh, yeah, f- the flame went up very high just below the... Um, Heat detector. It detected the heat. That shit went off. So there you go. A little tip for all you first years out there. You're trotting down to the smoking area. Uh, actually, that's something I want to talk about. Even though you can smoke in your room, um, you shouldn't, number one. If you get caught, you will get fined. Perhaps. Kicked out. Um, but for first years, at least for the fir- at least for the first few weeks, if you are going to smoke in a room, for the first few weeks, don't go down to the smoking area. And maybe find some people to talk to. Some fellow smokes. Because smoking area, as you probably well know, from bars and clubs, is a very good way to meet people. And perhaps somebody from the opposite sex that you want to put your dick in or get your dick put into. No, get their dick put into you. <laughs> yeah. So, first years. In Liverpool, in a United Students accommodation. Actually, especially fucking, uh, well, not especially, opposite of especially. Uh, Horizon Heights, if you're in there, don't smoke in your room. You've got a very nice fucking smoking area up in your, like, rooftop. Fucking use it. I never got a very nice smoking area. You know what my smoking area is? The fucking door. Outside the door. That's where my smoking area is. On my window. But shh. Don't tell. <coughs> also, if you are going to smoke out your window, make sure you have... Well, if you have an ashtray, make sure that whenever you're going home from hol- for holidays, you put it in your drawer or something. Because <coughs> I will do room checks during the holidays and that. Make sure you're not being a bold boy or a bad girl. Handy ice. Oh. Another thing. Again, this is sort of specifically for people going to John Mirrors. Um, if you're doing an art or law or business, you'll be in the Redmond's building where there is a Starbucks. Do not go to the Starbucks. It's very fucking expensive, like all Starbucks are. But here's the fucking inside scoop. Again, they have a hot water tub, which is hot, hot water. You bring your own mug, you bring your own coffee, you fucking hot water that coffee, bam, you got a free fucking coffee. Don't be spending all that money at Starbucks. If you're hungry as well, there's a Tesco nearby, get it, get get yourself a meal deal. That goes for anybody going to uni, get yourself a meal deal, bring your own coffee, don't get shit from your uni building. 
Try and save money, huh? Also, if you have an Aldi nearby, go to that Aldi, because Aldi is the fucking best shop in the world. Low prices, quality food. <coughs> okay, now that I've sort of moved on to um, accommodations, we're going to talk about accommodation etiquette. Things that you should know. This goes for all years as well, not just first years. Uh, if you're second year and you're a dickhead, uh, if you're third year and you're a dickhead, this goes for um, living in a house as well with your pals from uni, not just accommodations. Okay. Sorry about all the rustling. Um, okay, number one. If you're sharing a flat in our house with people, you're going to want to fucking keep clean. And I don't mean just yourself, I mean the kitchen. Keep your dishes wash, washed. Um, if you make a mess, clean it the fuck up. Um, if you're using the oven, and I've done this many times by accident, don't leave the oven on. Uh, what else? Make sure your room doesn't fucking stink right now. In my flood, um, not why I was talking about the Chinese cons had set the fire alarm off. They burnt something else to... Whoa. That was a peak. Uh, they burnt something else today. I wasn't actually there for it happening. I was in uni. But I was told... Well, I heard that they burnt something. And now our whole corridor smells like burnt plastic. Which, as you can probably tell, isn't a nice smell. So it's rule number three. Or no... So actually, it's part of rule number one. Uh, make sure that your whole area is smelling good and nice. Aight. Um, that brings me on... <coughs> fuck's wrong, my voice. Uh, brings me on to point number two. Um, don't be too loud. During day and night, especially night. Don't be too loud. Nobody likes a cunt that's blasting music. At fucking 2am, 3am, even 10am, or 10pm, even. 10am as well is a bit iffy. Um, well, what I would say about that is, even though you may not go to bed at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, maybe you go to bed at like 12 or 5am, that doesn't mean everybody else goes to bed at that time. That just means you go to bed at that time. So don't be a loud cunt. Keep it quiet. Be considerate. Have a nice. Ow. Okay. Stop with the ice. Because that's annoying me and you. I can tell. Yeah, just to further that point. Um... As I said, maybe you go to bed at five, doesn't mean everybody else is going to bed at five. And to that point, you may think that your music is class, you may think you have an unreal sense of good music, but hey, not everybody likes that music, and most likely your music uh, choice is shite. Or maybe it could be even that your music choice isn't shite, but it just is whenever it's 5am. <coughs> And somebody else is trying to sleep. Alright, boys and girls. <coughs> um, I can't remember if I had more stuff to bring up. It was mostly just to keep clean. The smoking tip. Uh, be good at uni. And don't be loud. So it was actually as well. You'll most likely be moving in with flatmates. Uh, try and make pals with them. Uh, actually, one thing across the board. All my mates in uni, or everyone I've talked to in uni as well, have all said first year they had one weird cunt in their flat. One, well, one weird cunt or one absolute dickhead. And... Uh, as I said, or Noah's Kynan said in the last episode, uh, actually as we both said, 
if you don't know who that dickhead or weird person, if you're looking around all your flatmates or thinking about all your flatmates and you think, mm, she's not a weird cunt, she's nice, uh, he's, yeah, he's dead on, cleans up, always oh, has his room smell nice, doesn't make too much noise, yeah, she's dead on as well. Then, uh oh, it appears, sir or madam, that you are the dickhead. Just something to think about. <clears throat> um, what other tips do I have? Um, be organised as fuck. That's always good. Uh, my folder at the minute, I've got six different modules. I've got, uh, like, ten weeks in each module. All my modules are colour-coded. All my weeks are colour-coded. I've got poly pockets for each week. I write on the top of my pages as well whenever I'm taking notes in class. I write the name of the module, the week, the uh, lecture number, um, the what else did I write? The date and the page number. I've got all my shit in my folder. It's looking well nice and organized. Uh, I've always been told that I'm very good at organizing folders uh, <coughs> in school. Uh, shout out to Miss Boggs. Uh, and she's like the sixth year um, study tutor thing. Um, in America, if you don't know what I'm talking about, sixth year, sort of like your seniors in high school. We've got lower sixth and upper sixth. So it's basically sixth year and seventh year, but we just call it lower sixth and upper sixth. And we have a, you probably have as well, study hall. Uh, study hall. We'd all go in the study. Our study supervisor was called Miss Boggs. She's a fucking lovely woman. Uh, I have no contempt towards her. She was always nice to me and everyone else. But she, I left my English folder, I think, <clears throat> in her classroom, or in her classroom, in study. And she found it. And she sent out a wee email to, I think I was in Spanish or something, sent an email to my Spanish teacher, saying that I had to go up to study to get my folder. When my mom thinks she said to get my folder, she said I'd go, I'd go up to study. I went up there. Uh, she gave, my, gave me my folder and said, at first whenever I saw this, I thought it was a teacher's folder because it's all nice and organized and good. So Jack, you can stay and study and just forget about the rest of Spanish. And I said, Miss Boggs, I fucking love you. Thank you very much. You're a fucking G. So yes, very fond of Miss Boggs. Um, so it was my wee tangent about how uh, to keep an organised folder. So that's cool. Oh, my hair door. Alright, we'll continue. No, we won't. I'll edit it out. Shit. I think some shit's going down out there. But anyway, um, I suppose I'll look through my notes. Because I've sort of blown through all my uni talk already. Um. Oh. Oh, oh one more thing. I just realised I made a list on my notes on my phone. Um, if you're washing your clothes, which most people do, uh, first of all, if you don't wash your clothes, fucking wash your clothes. What are you, a fucking imbecile? You fucking slippery dandy. Wash your damn clothes. But if you do, there's a rule. Shit. There's a rule, a very important rule. You put your shit into the washing machine. It says how long you're wash Because... In uni, you'll have a washing room. Not each flat will have a washing machine. 
And even at that, if your flat does have a washing machine, this still applies. But it most certainly applies if you have a washroom. I said that really poor. <laughs> washroom. Um, yeah, so a washroom. What it is, is you'll have about maybe 10 washing machines in it. And you'll have 10 dryers. You put your shit into the washing machine. Don't forget the detergent. 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 Um, you put your shit into the washing machine. You put your detergent in or your recapsule. Oh. The washing machine will most likely tell you how long the wash is. As soon as you fucking know that that wash is done, you go get your clothes. You put them into the dryer. Once again, it will tell you exactly how long it'll take to dry the clothes. If your uni is part of shit, if your uni is a part of the circuit circuit, the circuit app, the app fucking tells you when your laundry is done. As soon as you get that notification, or as soon as you know your drying is done, you go get your clothes. Want to know why? Because there are other cunts waiting to dry or wash and dry their shit. I've had this problem so many times over the years. I go to the laundry room. Uh, well, first of all, I look at the circuit app. And the app tells you how many washers and dryers are free at any one time. So, you know, if it says all the washers are used, you go, mm, maybe I don't go then. If it says most of them are free, fucking right, go ahead. If I look at that app and it says all the washers are free, that'll mean most of the time one or two are free because cunts don't get their shit. And it really pisses me off. I heard a beep and I thought the fire alarm was going to go off again. I don't know why I'm talking in that weird voice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if, you're, if you've got shit in the uh, laundry room, get it as fucking fast as possible. There I go with that voice again. I need to stop. Yeah, get your shit as fast as possible, because other people are waiting to use the machines, and if you've got your shit lying in there for an hour, mm, means I can't use it, or if you got your shit in there and I'm in the room, your shit's going on the floor. Your shit is going on the floor. And if you're in first year, and people have got their shit in the... Uh, washing machine or the dryer, uh, you go to the laundry room, you wait, and I'll tell you on the washing machine as well, I think, for, like, well, at least for United Students accommodations, I'll tell you on the washing machine how long is left of the wash, I'd say on most washing machines it tells you, um, if it says zero minutes, if it says it's done, you wait ten minutes, if nobody comes and gets your shit, or their shit, you dump it on the floor. And you put your own stuff in. Because why should you have to wait for other people to not get their shit? Uh, my chest is still really fucking sore. Most of the ice has gone to water and all, so that's cool. And so yeah, don't be that dickhead and leave your shit in the washing machine. Or the dryer, it's not cool. Um, another thing that I want to go on off the uni. Well, it's sort of so uni based. Uh, I'm going to get the fucking coronavirus. Because I live in an accommodation which is like 80% Chinese people. And we all know the fucking nappy center of the coronavirus is China. I'm not worried now, because they... Well, I'm sort of worried now. Um, well, I wasn't worried now until I got an email. Well, there was an email sent out to everybody uh, from uni saying, attention all Chinese students, 
uh, regarding Corona. Ah, bollocks. I just dripped water on myself. Um, attention all Chinese students regarding coronavirus. Basically, you can go here to fucking get checked or whatever. Um, my accommodation is 80-90% Chinese people, which is fucking cool. Um, <clears throat> I was saying before that I not, I'm not worried now. Um, and I want to further that point by saying... <sighs> shit. I am worried for the future because um, we're in January now. As you probably well know, February comes up next, then March, then April. Now, I want you all to tell me what fucking holiday comes up in April. Give you a hint, it's fucking Easter. What usually happens uh, at Easter in uni? We have a break, a two week break. Some of these cunts are going to be going home for the break. Back to China, where the fucking coronavirus is. Hmm. I'm telling you, I'm going to get the coronavirus. Not joking. Why are you joking? I'm joking. Fuck me, we're only 35 minutes in. This might have to be a short one. As I said before, I'm very unprepared. This is very last minute. So, you may have to forgive me if this is a short boy. We're 35 minutes in now. Um, so, I'll look up things to talk about. There will probably be a silence here, so we'll have to... <coughs> Actually, no. I want to talk about fucking Billie Eilish. William Eilish. Why the fuck she winning everything? Hmm? She won, I think it was Best Album, Best New Artist, Best Song. Uh, hold on, actually, let me look up her awards to see what she actually won. Yeah, Grammy Sweep. E Online. Fuck off. No, what the fuck's it doing? Get out, you fucking smelly cunt. Okay. Let's see. Let's see, what's it? Yeah, she won fucking five Grammys. <coughs> Best album of the year. 100% not Billy Eilish's album. I can name you about two songs off of her album. And let's be honest, it wasn't that good a fucking album. I mean, if that album is what we're classing as the best these days, music is in a very fucking scary place. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad album, I'm just saying it's not a great one. I mean, Lewis Capaldi, fucking love that cunt. He's a funny guy. His album was mm, ten times better. Her album was just... <clears throat> it was weird, like, that's why it's getting the attention that it is. She's a good singer, don't get me wrong. She's a good musician. Uh, she's a good uh, character as well. Like she seems like a lovely person. Oh, seems like a lovely person. Uh, this isn't me talking shit about her. This is me talking shit about the music industry. Because uh, it's going to shit, ladies and gents. Um, best new artist. Maybe okay. I can see best new artist because twenty nineteen was her year. She is like her breakout year. Everyone fucking loves her now. At the start of 2019, nobody knew who the fuck Billie Eilish was. You could probably say the same for Lewis Capaldi, though. Um, I mean, 
what other new artists? To be fair, yeah. Best new artist, I'll give her that one. She's she's had a very good year. And there's nobody else really, I would say, who sort of rose to the success that she has in the past year that sort of started as not a nobody, but uh, not that popular. Um, fuck, I was looking up what our other awards were, and I forgot. Let's see. Oh, and why the fuck is... Right. Something that's pissed me off about Billie Eilish. Why is she doing the song for the new James Bond film? She's not really a James Bond type musician. I mean, before her, it was your man fucking... What's his name? X Factor Boy. <clears throat> anyway, he has that sort of voice, a fucking like grandeur, high class voice. Whereas she, as I said before, is a good musician, but she just doesn't suit the style of James Bond. So James Bond is all like class and elegance and being fucking cool. Uh, which Billy Irish is cool in a different way. You know, she's more down with the kids. Kind of cool. If you know what I mean. I'm talking shit. But I'm also talking the truth. Why the fuck is she doing the music for James Bond? She's not James Bond material. Um... Why, why the fuck is it not saying what award she won? Right. Hold on, let me look this up properly. Okay, so she won the four big awards, Best New Artist, Song, Record, and Album of the Year. Uh, the song, I'm guessing, is Bad Guy, which, I mean, again, it just sort of shows that the music industry is going to shite. Because Bad Guy isn't that good a song. It's a catchy song, but it's not a good song. I mean, if you listen to, let me think, Tame Impala, if you listen to Borderline by Tame Impala, it's the first song of his newer songs, um, like Borderline was made in 2019, um, I know I talked about Tame Impala quite a lot last week, but I want to talk about Borderline in comparison to Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Borderline, uh, like all the Tame Impala songs, is a very technically, like, amazing song. Like, the way Tame Impala, or Kevin Parker even, fucking, he does things with instruments that shouldn't work, but does. Like, he's a fucking genius the way he thinks. He put things in the songs that, like, y'all know Sam Weatherup, he's been on the podcast before, he's a musician, he said as well that he does things with instruments, or he puts things in the songs that he would never, that Sam would never in a million years think of, uh, it's shit that nobody else is doing in the industry, where's fucking Ken Parker's awards, oh wait shit, he's not marketable, his songs aren't catchy, Thus, he doesn't get fucking Grammys. <sighs> you see my beef? Um, that's all. That's all I want to talk about there. Um, also, isn't song and record the same fucking thing? I mean, actually, I want to know the difference between 
uh, best new song and best new record. Um, that only says about the f- four awards. I thought she won five. When we all fall asleep, where do we go? Is the name of her new album. Like, fuck off, Rolling Stone. Right, my phone's being a dickhead. Okay, I'll look it up for the next episode. But basically, I was under the impression that scene, or song and record are the same damn thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just being a ignorant slut. But hey, what can you do? So I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Because I've run, a th- run out of things to talk about. Um, quite honestly, I, I want to smoke and I want to chill out. Uh, and I invite you all to do the same. Not with me, but you can do it by yourselves, with your friends. Just have a smoke. Maybe it's a cigarette, a fig. Maybe it's some grass, some marijuana. Just fucking grab the person closest to you. Maybe you're on a train or a bus. I don't care. You don't care. If you're listening to this right now in the train or bus or plane, I want you to turn to the person next to you, even you don't, even if you don't know them. Grab their arm, give it a good old squeeze, and say, "Hey, hey, friend, you want to smoke up, huh?" And if they say no. You're legally obligated to punch them as hard as you can in the throat. Give them a good old box to the head. Say, fuck you, you cunt. Everybody smokes up. Even if you don't smoke, if someone offers you a smoke up, you goddamn smoke. Right? Well, ladies and gents, I'll leave you with that. If you want to follow uh, Documented Bits on our social medias, we're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Documented Bits. Um, there may be variations with cap- shit. capitalization of letters and the words, but we're Documented Bits on everything. That goes for all of our streaming services as well. If you're listening to the podcast and you think... Oh, fuck. Whenever I listen to podcasts, I like to watch something as well. Why don't you head over to our fucking YouTube channel? Because we film all of our episodes and we put them up there. Just if listening is too much of a menial task for you, and you like to be entertained by the eyes and the ears, head over to our YouTube. Again, that's just documented bits. If you search us up, we'll be there. Sometimes we have wee bonus clips at the end of episodes. There was definitely one on the end of episode 27. I know that. This is episode 30 now. Episode 27 had a wee bonus clip at the end. Or it might have been 28. Or it might have been both. 28 or 27 or both has bonus clip at the end. Why don't you look out for that? Um, and vice versa, if you're watching on YouTube and you think, Hey, I like watching this shit but I just want to have it on the background while I do other things or if I'm going I wouldn't suggest it for the gym because we're a bit well actually I wouldn't suggest any podcasts for the gym you need some fucking music to fucking rev you up Um, I'll speak more to that later but if you're wanting a podcast just for walks or whatever we're also on audio platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Podbean, Castbox, and CF Network. If you're listening on any of those platforms and you heard your platform sh- uh, g- to give shout, um, given given a shout out, you better s- have said woo to yourself. Um. Yeah, 
to bring it back to what I said before about the gym, you don't want a podcast. If you want a cool uh, playlist for the gym or just for general party times, uh, why don't you like go on to my playlist on Spotify? It's called uh, A Dirty Mix for a Dirty Bitch. I think that's what you call it. I'll have it up on the screen. Uh, why don't you go subscribe to that playlist? Uh, there's some nice wee tunes on there. Got some Black Sabbath, uh, Tame Impala, Mac DeMarco. Uh, who else have I got? Game Me G's, Dobbs, Dobson and Man, who have recently changed their name. Uh, but that's what they are on my playlist. Uh, got some Ozzy Osbourne in there. We've got yeah, General Levi. Uh, what's her name? Lisa Mitchell. Uh, Jack Johnson. We got, we got all sorts in there. We got Tyler the Creator, I think, and Post Malone. So there's sort of something for everyone. On uh, we got Telepathic Teddy Bear as well. That song from Mr. Robot. We got that on there. <coughs> I'm saying we. It's my playlist just for myself. But you all can give it a listen if you want to. Okay, that's. I'm actually gonna wrap it up now because we're at fifty minutes. So night-night, goodbye.